this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. So the God cannot point at our quote unquote assumed righteous white brothers who conquered the nation and say y'all lying like a rug. Which what, what you did was an atrocity and you need to repent. You need to simply repent. state it, that's the bottom line. We can't really twist the turn any other kind of way. And then let the Lord deal with that situation. I yes. think what, what we've not done and what we, we we think we ought to be doing is employing the same methods that the world system does to ascend. It's, the word says he pulled down one people and raises up another. He didn't say that we're they, they going to conquer them. He said he's going to pull them down. They are supposedly his representative. They do not, they they falsely represent him. Right. And, and, they, and, they, and they stand before the world system and, and tell them this is what Christ looked like. But the reality of it is it doesn't line up with the scripture. Exactly. Because scripture, like I said, we found with the Galatians, there's neither Jew nor Greek, no bond nor free. But we're all one in Christ Jesus. That's what the scripture teach. The scripture does not teach a hierarchy. The, teach, the scripture does not sit there and say that somebody's subhuman. The scripture does not treat, uh, say that a whole race or color of people are, are uh, cursed. And on top of that is, Noah is not God. So you don't sit there and say what well, Noah cursed is God. And then the scriptures, the good news is Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Come on. Well, and, so, and it's, it's you know, you. We, we often are told, okay, well, Christ, you know, gave us a restart. He placed us right back into the garden once he fulfilled the law. He come on, once brother. the redemptive work happened, Amen, we were man. placed right back into Amen. the garden thank you sir or, or, or the relationship with god is it's super and then god. i looked at i just looked up uh genesis 1 28 it says and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth so now we are to do this with the gospel. Amen. We are to what? Amen. Be yeah. faithful and multiply. We are right. to replenish the earth. We are to subdue it. Right. And have dominion over it. Oh. So, I mean, it's just, we're placed right back in that 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 particular pattern. Harmony. And we're not performing to that <laughs> level. Preach, man. Not <laughs> preach. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, what you said is, over these other things, but not over each other. Not, no, not, not over each other. other. Not to dominate over each other, but no. to love one another. Amen. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> well, in, 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 our, in, our, in our system, the one who is strongest always serves from the bottom. He always edifies it and uplifts everything, anybody that's, that's weak is. Well, look the, the, the beauty of it. Go ahead, Elvis. The, the me, beauty of it. What the scripture say, though? He does least. He does least. I'm saying, you just said the world system. What does the gospel say? He that is least. The least of them it's shall great. be the greatest. That's Come right. on, man. The weak shall be the strong. Come on, man. So the strength is at the bottom of lifting everything else. And so, that is where he, he says in one place, he said that the Lord, that the kings of this world lord over each other, but it's not going to be like way with you. He said, he told you. the greatest among you shall be as your servant. He has the brother. Yeah. And you know, and I hope what I'm hoping, I, I, as, where I'm going on this, on this study and discussion is that all the people that, that, that will hear this and then us as we go out and proclaim the gospel is to get people to start saying, look, you, you're going to have to repent if you want to comply and be in Christ. Now, if you, you want to be out of Christ, then I understand what you're doing and I, I'm praying for you because but as in one thing I'm gonna put in this thing, trying to show them is look, you can become a reprobate. And you become a reprobate, you're now moving away from the, the, the salvation that God has gave you. 
separate. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm saying that I want I want my brothers that if you're a police officer and you're listening to this, or you if you're a minister and you're listening to this, let's teach the people the full gospel. And the full gospel is to love one another. We don't sit there and shoot somebody and kill somebody and say, I want to just get home. Don't come to job if you don't understand that this is a risk that you take when you go out there. Don't sit there and create laws that keep putting people down. Look at these laws we had, y'all. Look at about some of the history of our country. We, 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 you, count, you call us one third one time, whether we're one third or one fifth of a person. Huh? You, there was a law the other day, y'all. Uh, it was, I think it's Louisiana or whatever, Illinois or somewhere. The sixty-year-old man got life in prison because they determined that he was a habitual offender. The man was was caught trying to steal some hedges. He was working with a landscape company. He tried to steal some hedges, mm -hmm. and therefore the guy turned to me and this is his fourth strike. And they gave him life in the Supreme Court in Illinois. You had one black woman, five white guys. Black woman, the only one that made a dissent on that ruling, said, "Are we? Are you serious? This man is six years old. You gonna give him a life sentence for mm -hmm. for stealing hedges? It's not a non-violent offense." And you gonna give them life? Is that what you think the whole thing was for? Or how about the law about the cocaine and the crack? Good Lord, five grams to get life? Yeah. No, rock. Oh, huh? Five grams of rock. Five grams of rock. But and if it's powdered, uh, which, 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 right? which Caucasian people mostly use, then it's a minor offense. Woo! Because it could yeah, you gotta have over a, 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 a brick. Yeah. To, to say, hey, that's just you, you're distributor. Gotta have at least a kilo in your pocket. <laughs> a kilo? You got a gram? You got a kilo? And you gonna you gonna apply this because really? I'm just saying is the hypocrisy that those of us who, listen. The reason I want to put this out there is this: those of us who say we are in Christ, and I'm talking about anybody who's listening to this. If you are in Christ, you're going to have to reevaluate your behavior and your opinion toward your fellow mankind. We're supposed to love one another and we're supposed to love our fellow mankind. He's not God is not telling us not to love somebody that's not a Christian. God has said to love one another, but we're also going to love everybody else. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's the word. That's the word. You know that you're appreciated by the love you have for one another. Come on. It, it tells us to love our enemies. Come on. <laughs> this is Jesus. This Come is, this is the, 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 the directives of our leader, of our Lord, our Savior. It says, bless them that curse you, pray for them that despite the use and persecute you. Come on. Paul in another place said that we should prefer each other above all things. Come on. Yeah, love is, is our innate nature now that we re reunited with love. We're now creatures and, and creations of love, and we need to be able to display that. The one thing I do want to say, though, and I don't know if this is controversial or not, but there's nowhere, and I think this is where a lot of people find fault with Christianity, but there is no way in Christianity that says you ought to sacrifice your household. The word says that if a man does not provide for the needs of his own house he's worse than an infidel and a lot of us think that Christ has caused, called us to be docile and there's nowhere in scripture where it's, it's indicated that we're supposed to be docile to be sure somebody said earlier we literally are at war with the world systems and if we don't propagate the gospel we are losing we're, uh, we're, not, we're called a truce we don't want to conflict we don't want to conflict but it's innate that there's going to be conflict yeah. Jesus said he did not come to bring peace but a sword yeah so we should be actively engaged in storming the gates of hell the scripture says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us 
it is said that we should not prevail against the gates of hell. So it appears as though we should be the aggressor, but the reality of it is, is that we've taken the posture of, uh, we become docile. And we as blacks were taught to be docile, so we wouldn't, you know, uprise and overthrow. But now that we come to knowledge of the truth, I think that we have to aggressively publish that truth. Yeah, but that, I, think, I think you might want to, you, if you don't mind, Valentine's Day is our you step into the gate. Sir? Uh, I'm saying is what weapons are you using? So yes, you understand. The gospel. You're, you're, being, you're being more, you're supposed to be boldly going out. Yes. The gospel, but the weapons that you use are not weapons of carnality. That's what he says. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God to the pulling down of the stronghold. So we're not aggressively going out here beating anybody over here, which I think we kind of miss. Misunderstood that when we came or we settled the country, you either become a Christian or die. You know, it was offered to, to the Native Americans. That, that was not how Christ did it. But he never, he himself never backed away from telling the truth. As we say in this, we say he called a spade a spade. If you're a liar, you're a liar. If, if, you, if, you, if you're a thief, you're a thief. And what we need to be able to do in our generation, because God has given us the knowledge of who he is and how he will protect us until the point of our departure time about departure we need to tell the truth like you're saying right now you can't look say say you're doing the right thing and you hate your brother right. you can't say you're going to serve and protect or be a policeman if you're scared of the folk that you're serving yeah so there's a lot of lies that have been propagated throughout history the american history america has never lived as a whole a christian life in a sense we live right. a we live there have been fractions of christianity in america Right. But for the most part, the country itself was developed by men of average and greed. Uh, murderers, liars, thieves. These are the ones who actually forwarded the country. And you can tell that by the way that they did it. They did it through every atrocity that you could possibly perpetrate against mankind. Yeah. <clears throat> Those are truths that have to be acknowledged and not swept under the carpet and said, OK, we, we were with God and God allowed it. No, God allowed it, but you weren't you weren't operating in the in the in the in the, in the, in the guise of Christ because that ain't Jesus. So I think we have to preach that in this generation that our children might even know the truth. I think so, and I'm saying that's what we're supposed to be doing all the time. We should have been, and but we didn't have him. And I, well, no. what what we did was we we preached against. Uh, acts of our flesh. Yeah. We, we 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 preached against that. Yeah. Jesus didn't do that. Yeah. He did not do that. Nope. All he did was go about letting folks know about the kingdom of heaven. Yes, sir. Letting folks know about the love of God. Yes, sir. Letting folks know that there is now a redemptive work that is being done to yes. bring you back to the Father. Yes, sir. And that all things are possible to those who love him. So that is where we need to go. We need to get off of this, this aspect of preaching the physical attributes of what is manifested through love. Yes, sir. And quit, quit preaching about the fruits of the flesh. Come on, we, 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 we preach about the fruits of the flesh. Who wants to hear about that? Who, what person that is not saved wants to hear condemnation on what they live and what they believe in and their lifestyle? What they need to hear is the alternative. <laughs> and that's the fruits of the Spirit. So you, you teach that. Yes, sir. That draws people. Yes, sir. You know what? What we have done, and that thing was in Galatians, he asked in Galatians, said, who bewitched you to, to go, go back. back to the law? Yes. And if, if, and if you ever notice, like even in politics, one of the red meats is called law and order. The problem with the law, it does not address the heart of man. And that's why, that's why we said, so you said the fruit, there is no law. It's not governed by a law. There is no law against it because it's not under the law.